But I want to talk to you. I just want to talk to you a few minutes. I want to give you three things how you can have a better spouse. And this, and I want to read uh, a couple of verses in Hebrews 13, and this is verses 4 through 6. And it says this in Hebrews 13, verse 4, verse 4, says, Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. Let your conduct be without covetedness, be content with such things as you have, for he himself, talking about God, has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. Now, I don't know whether you've ever put those last two verses, verse 5 and 6, in connection with verse 4. But verse 4 said marriage, it said, it said marriage is a honorable, is honorable above everything. And, and I, you know, and one thing we have to realize is this, you know, last Wednesday, we, this whole month we're doing Marriage Matters, and uh, last week we started that off by talking about covenant, and by talking about the importance of covenant, and why covenant is so important, because marriage is not just a contract, it's a covenant, right? When God, when God formed, or when God made Eve, he did, he could have, he could have made Eve out of the dirt, just like he made Adam, but he didn't do that. He cut Adam. There was bloodshed. And anytime you have a covenant, there's bloodshed. And so Adam and Eve entered into covenant from the very beginning. And so, so you know, we understand that marriage is about covenant. But these three things here I want you to notice about how you can have a better spouse. It says marriage is honorable above all. That word honorable also means it's esteemed, it's worthy, it's precious of great price and especially dear. So in other words, one thing, if something is worthy, if something is honorable, if something is, uh, you know, with, you know, just something that you, that you value at a great price, we could say this, that in order for you to have a better spouse, one thing you need to do is you need to have appreciation. You need to appreciate your spouse. And you need to let her know, let him know that you appreciate each other. You know, and, and uh, appreciation means this. The definition of appreciation means to be grateful, to be thankful, to value, or to hold in high regard, or to raise in value. Now, you know, in Proverbs 18.21, Proverbs 18.21 says this. It says that the power of life and death, or death and life, is in your tongue. Then the very next verse, does anybody know what the very next verse says? He that finds a wife finds a good thing. Did you realize that in your the power that each one of you have the power in your tongue to have a good marriage or a bad marriage? It's what is how you talk. It's what you say about your spouse. It's what you say to your spouse, and it's what you say about your spouse. And the more you appreciate your spouse, the better your spouse will be. The more she hears you, the more he hears you appreciate, the better they will be. So instead of talk, always talking about, oh, well, they always do this. They never do that. They, you know, they this, they that. Why don't you start praising the things that they do do, the things that they do well, the things, the things that, you know, if, if whatever, find something that they do well and appreciate them for that. Let them know that you love them. Let them know that you appreciate when they do that thing. And then just watch, yeah, and then, and then just watch, now that can't, he's, he's clapping, he's the one that knew all the answers. I guarantee you, he appreciates, they appreciate each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so words, can, now listen, words can either build up or tear down your marriage. And here's the most important part about that statement. Words can either build up or it can tear down, and you get to choose which one you do, that you use. You get to choose whether you build your marriage up or whether you tear your marriage down. So if you want a better spouse, appreciate them. Amen. Let them know that. Amen. The second thing is this, and it's in uh, verse number 5. It said this, let your conduct be without covetousness. Now, a lot of times when we think about covet something, when we covet something, we think about money or we even think about 
like lust, like, you know, just, you know, things like that. But you realize that in, in when this was given in the book of Deuteronomy, that, that it talked about, it said, do not covet your, your neighbor's wife or their maidservants or manservants. So when he talked about covetous, he was talking about covetousness. <laughs> he was talking about, you know, if you are married, there's no need for you to be looking at somebody else. You don't need to be coveted. You don't need to be wanting somebody else. You're married. Amen. So the second, now listen, the second word that we're going to use, the first word was appreciate. The second word is attention. Give attention at home. Don't give attention to other people. Give attention at home when you appreciate them and you show them attention. Guess what? You'll have a better spouse. And you'll, you'll be able to, you'll be able to, uh, to you know, to, to enjoy, your, uh, enjoy your spouse a lot better. Now, this is interesting. In verse 5, it said this. It said, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. We, I could add in there, I could put in there, be content with your marriage. In other words, don't think, oh, it would be better if I married somebody else. See, you're, you're married now. And, you know, people, people come and say, well, you know, I'm not married to the right person. Yes, you are. You're married to the, you're married to the one you married. <laughs> Amen. You're married to the right person. Amen. You're in covenant with that person. We talked about that last Wednesday night. If you didn't hear that, you can go back and listen to it. I mean, that, that, I, I know I ministered that, but it was a good message. I mean, on covenant, everybody needs to hear that. When we do marriage counseling, we spend time talking about covenant and the importance of covenant. You know, I won't marry anybody unless we go through marriage counseling with them because marriage is important, and it's important that people understand that it's a covenant, right? But now listen to this. He goes on to say this. So be content with what you have. But then he said this, for he himself, this is what God has said. Now, you remember... Last week we talked about this, about how that marriage is a mirror image of, of God's relationship with us. You know, because Paul, Paul related marriage to the church, right, and to our relationship with God. So here he said this, he said, for he himself, for God himself has said this, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Now why, why would he mention two negatives there? He said, I won't leave you, and I won't forsake you. If you look those words up and you study those words where he says, I won't leave you, that is physical. I'm not walking out. I'm here. In the tough times, I'm not quitting. I'm staying. But then the word forsake, the word forsake is an emotional word. So, I, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people are there physically, but they're not there emotionally. They've checked out on their marriage. You know, their heart is somewhere else. But he, related, he went back and he related and he said this, God himself has said, I will never physically leave you, nor will I ever abandon you emotionally. I will always be with you. I will be there in the good times and I'll be there in the bad times. I'll go when things are good, we'll enjoy it together. When things are bad, we're going to get through this. It's not a question of I'm leaving physically or I'm leaving emotionally. No, God has said, He has promised, God has promised you and He's promised me, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When you are married, that needs to be a promise you give your spouse. I will never walk out on you and I will never leave you emotionally. I won't check out and my heart won't be somewhere else. My heart is hooked to you. Amen. That's what God said. God said, don't worry. You know, God's not up there saying, well, I think I want to get me somebody else. They're not very good. Now, He could say that about every one of us. But he doesn't. Amen. So he said, I won't leave you nor forsake you. That's the reason, listen, that's the reason that romance, we use the word romance, that's the reason that that word is so important. And here's what romance means. If you study that out and just look at the definition and look what it means, romance just basically means this in a nutshell. It just means that I'm thinking about you and I don't have to. You know, now, on, on a night like tonight, we, we think about each other because it's Valentine's. But, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, and most of the time, wives are expecting a gift on Valentine's Day. But you know what true romance is, is when you bring her home flowers for no reason but other than just to say, I love you. You know, you do something special, 
the, the wife does something special for the husband for not, not a special occasion, but just simply to say, I appreciate you and my attention's on you. I'm thinking about you today. You see, that's, that's, how, that's how you have a better spouse. You, you, you appreciate them and you show them attention. Amen. I love um, Jimmy and Karen Evans. We use a lot of their stuff in, in marriage counseling and stuff. And he tells this one story. I just love this one story. He tells that they had a real rough go when they first got married. And they just about divorced. And, I mean, they, they, it was just real. I mean, their whole testimony is incredible at the first of their marriage. But, um, but they were later on, uh, years later, they were having an interview with, with, uh, with, uh, uh, somebody, with another radio host. And, and the guy asked Karen, the guy asked the wife, and he, said, she, he, he asked this question. He said, he said, during the early years of your marriage when things were so hard and things were so bad, and, 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 you know, and, and Jimmy Evans says that you know, he was a jerk, he was so chauvinistic, he was, you know, I mean, just, he, he was just a, not, not, good, not a good husband. You know, but this, this guy asked, the, asked his wife, said, during those early years when things were so hard for you, did you ever think about leaving or did you ever think about having an affair and finding somebody else? And listen to what her comment was. Her answer was this. Her answer, and, and, and J- Jimmy Evans, when he tells the story, he's like, he's like, I wanted to hear the answer to that. I was curious. <laughs> you know, was she thinking about somebody else while, in all those bad times? But here was her answer. It was, it was great. Her aunt, she said this. She said, no. Just a matter of fact, no. And then, but then she said this. She said, I never let my heart go there. In other words, she said, my heart was always with Jimmy. And not one time did I let my heart try to get hooked up with somebody else. Because if you get your heart hooked up with somebody else, then the next thing you'll be doing is leaving. Don't let your heart go anywhere except for with your spouse. It has no, it has no purpose. You have no purpose connecting with somebody else Connecting your heart with somebody else. Your spouse is who your heart needs to be connected to. Amen. So you, you, you have appreciation, and then you have attention. And then the third thing is this. The third thing is from verse number 6, and it said this. It said, because God said that he will never leave us nor forsake us, then it says, so we can boldly say, because we know that, now we can say something. Now we go, we go back to God and we say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me? The third thing that will make you a, make a get, will will make your spouse a, a better spouse is to understand that they are there for assistance. They're your helper. And here's the thing about a helper: with a helper, notice notice what he said here. He said he said because he understands what God who God is. He says the Lord is my helper, so I shall not fear. What can anybody do to me? And see, in marriage, when you understand you're there to help each other, amen, you're you're standing side by side, shoulder by shoulder. You're you're fighting this thing together. You're not two different people. You're one now. And you are helping each other. And when you understand that they are my helper and they're going to be there, they're not leaving. They're not leaving me physically. They're not leaving me emotionally. Then you'll be able to say with confidence, we can get through anything. You see, we can get through anything because I have assistance. I'm not, in, I'm not in this just by myself. See, I've got a helper. So when I go through things, when we go through things, it's not me by myself. We are going through something. And my helper, my wife, or, you know, the other, vice versa, her helper, me, we're helping each other get through this. And when you understand that you have a helper in your marriage, then you, then you can say with confidence, I can get through anything. You see, when, when you, when you uh, affirm them or appreciate them, you show them attention, and then you not only do you know you have assistance, but you are an assistant. You help. You lend your assistance to help them get through things. Amen. That's how you can have a better spouse. Amen. So if, you, if you've ever said those words, I, I wish I had a better spouse, then that's that's ways that you can have a better spouse. Amen. Let me give you uh, let me give you real quick, and we're just about finished. <clears throat> let me give you ten decisions that that you need to make. And if you haven't made these, you need to make them tonight. You need to make them right now, and say these are things that are uncompromised. I mean, we're not compromising on this. These are decisions we're making beforehand. That as a husband and wife, 
this is what this is the way our life is going to look. And and so here's just ten things real quick. Number one, divorce is never an option. Take divorce out of your vocabulary. We tell we tell young couples, especially young couples, we tell them never say the word divorce. Never threaten your spouse with divorce. Because once you use that word, you can never take it back. It's always hanging over their head. So divorce is not an option. Make, you, you make that de determination in your heart right now. Divorce is not an option. Amen? Number two, we will not go to bed angry with each other. <coughs> you know, the Bible says, the Bible says be angry. It's, it's not necessarily a sin to be angry. But what does it say? Be angry sin not and and I love something else Jimmy Evans says he says this about being angry he says that when you go to bed angry with your spouse you allow the devil to counsel you all night long about what your what what the devil is telling you your spouse meant and I guarantee you this the devil's not telling you the truth in other words you know when you go to bat when you go to bed upset you sit there and stew on that thing all night long. Well, I bet she meant this. I bet she meant that. I bet this is. I bet this is what she was thinking. And probably more than more than likely, it's the last thing she was thinking, because the devil will counsel you when when you go to bed angry, and you don't want the devil's counsel. Amen. So don't go to bed angry. Number three, we will never agree to disagree. That's, that's a cop-out people use all the time. Well, we'll just agree to disagree. But in the scriptures, you'll find this. Unity is a premium in marriage. You need, to, you need to figure out how you can agree on everything. Now, you know, there may be some little things that you may not agree 100% on. What I'm talking about especially is major decisions. You know, there's never been a decision that Stacy and I have made or that, that's been made in our household that we haven't agreed on. And you might say, well, I don't believe that. Well, it's true because both of us count unity as, as a premium. And we'll discuss it and we'll talk about it until, until, you know, until we both are in unity about you know, which direction we're going. We may not agree with 100% of the things. You understand that. But we're not in. We're not on to, uh, polar opposites on things. So you have you have to use you have to make sure that you have unity as a premium in your marriage. Amen. Um, number four, we we will respect each other, and we'll celebrate our differences. Now, just because you're different doesn't mean you you disagree on everything. But see, but you are you you each one of you have certain individual things that make make your personality up. Celebrate the differences. <laughs> Celebrate the differences. Don't don't you know don't let uh, don't think that that you know that you have to um, that you know celebrate those differences and and know that that you know if I'm thankful that Stacy's not just like me. The world couldn't handle two of us. <laughs> The world couldn't handle two of you. Amen. So we're different. Amen. So celebrate the differences. All right, real quick. Number six, stay faithful to each other physically and emotionally. We talked about that. Right? Stay, fa stay faithful. Stay faithful in your thought life. Stay faithful in your, in your walk. Stay faithful to each other, both physically and emotionally. Amen? Now here's a big one. We give each other the right to complain and to be honest without paying a price. Marriage is a safe harbor. And what that means is that we can talk about anything and we're safe. Just because you share an opinion with me, I'm not going to blast you for it. You're my, you're my spouse. You are, you know, not, not y'all. You are my spouse. <laughs> Stacy is my spouse, right? And I have to give her, I had to give her the right to share her opinions with me and her thoughts with me without me blasting her and telling her how wrong she is. Because you know what happens when, when I do that? 
She'll never be honest with me. She'll never tell me the truth. She'll never share her deepest feelings with me. Why? Because she knows when she, when she does that, I blast her. But you have to have a safe harbor in your marriage to where, to where you can talk about things without going off on each other. Amen. Now here's a big one. Make the dedication to be connected to your local church and fellow believers. We hear people talk about it all the time, well, I just don't have any friends. And, and we start asking questions, well, do you go to church? Well, sometimes. Well, do, you, do you stay after church and talk to people? No, nope, we're out the door as soon as church is over. Do you go to the fellowships? Well, no, we don't have time for that. But yet, you, you complain and fuss that you ain't got no friends. Well, you know, one of the purposes of church is, you know, for you to find friends. Listen, it's much better to find a friend in a church than a bar. Amen. Because if you find them in a bar, or, now, you know, there may be some good people there, but you understand what I'm saying. You, your chances are probably better finding them in a church. Amen. Friends in high places, yeah. Amen. All right, number eight. We could talk on, on these all night, but make decisions together. No bullying. Learn, learn to talk about every decision. Amen. Learn to talk, you know, have that open communication. <clears throat> Prioritize your marriage and work hard to meet each other's needs. You need, you need to make sure that you don't put other things ahead of your marriage. Now, God is ahead. God is the head. He is the first. But after God, it should come. Your spouse should come next. Amen. And then, and then your kids and church and, and their activities and things like that. But, but listen, God should be number one, and then your spouse should be right under that. You should prioritize your spouse. Amen. And then number 10, and, and we talked about this last week, but our marriage is a covenant based on Christ-like love, not feelings, convenience, and comfort. Because if you base it off, comfort, or off feelings and off, off convenience and things like that, then you know what? Your feelings change all the time. Your desires change all the time. And if you base your marriage off of feelings or off of, off of anything other than, than my, my marriage is a covenant, then you're going to struggle staying faithful in your marriage. But when you understand that your marriage is a covenant and that you're in this thing together and it's till death do us part, then you know what? You don't, even, you don't even let your heart go other places. Amen. So, so that was, that's ten decisions that, that you need to make and that, that need to be a priority in your life. Amen. Amen. All right. So now we wanted, we, we wanted to do a, a vow renewal. And for anybody that wants to, I would encourage you to do this. I mean, this is not, I mean, you know, this is not binding or, I mean, your marriage is already binding. I mean, anyway, but. But, you know, but this is just something just to, to be able to look your spouse in the eye and say, say, I will do it again. Amen. This, you know, I will choose you again. So here's what I wanted to do. This won't take but just a minute. But here's what I want to do. If you want to renew your vows, I want you just to come up front here and spread out along the front and, uh, and then just hold each other's hands and, and we're going to just go through, we're just going to repeat these vows real quick together. If, if you want to do that, we've got a certificate we'll give you. And, uh, no, I'm not playing music. Nobody's singing. So just kind of spread out and face each other, hold hands. You're married, so this is not, this is not weird. All right, so here's the way we're going to do this. Um, so, so I'm just going to, I'm basically just going to repeat. I'm, it's just going to be just like in the wedding ceremony. I'll, the first one, we'll do three different sets, just like we do in the wedding ceremony. The first one is just where you say, I do, after, after I'll, I'll repeat something and ask the men, uh, you know, if you take your uh, spouse to be your wife, and then Stacy will ask the women that. And then afterwards, you just simply say, I do. And then we will... Uh, We'll ask, uh, you know, ask you to repeat after us 
certain things, and then we'll do the rings as well. If you've got rings, you can take those off. If you can get them off, if you can't, you can just touch them. You can just touch them and hold them and, and act like you're putting it on them. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself taking it off. All right, so let's, let's just real quick, let's, we'll just repeat these vows. And this is, I, I will repeat all of this and then, and then just simply say, you'll just simply say, I do. Okay, so men. All right, so here we go. So men, do you take your spouse to be your wife? Do you commit yourself to her happiness and to her self-fulfillment as a person, to her usefulness in God's kingdom? And do you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve her in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity, and to be true and loyal to her so long as you both shall live. I do. All right. And then Stacy's going to ask the ladies the same thing. That's uh, Stacy's mic there. Wives, do you take your husband to be your husband? Do you commit yourself to his happiness and his self fulfillment as a person and to his usefulness in God's kingdom? And do you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve him in sickness and health, in adversity and prosperity, and to be true and loyal to him so long as you both shall live? All right, so men. <laughs> men, repeat, these, repeat this after me. We'll say it in, in short, choppy sentences so you can repeat it. So men, do you take your wife, or say, say just say this, say I, and then you'll say your name. Do I take you, your wife. To be my wife, my constant friend, my faithful partner, and my love from this day forward. In the presence of God and all these people, I offer you my solemn vow to be your faithful partner in sickness and in health, in good times and bad, in joy as well as sorrow. I promise to love you unconditionally, to support you in your goals, to honor and respect you, to laugh with you, to cry with you, and to cherish you for as long as we both shall live. And then Stacy's going to repeat, ladies repeat after her. I, Stacy, take you, Stephen, to be my husband. <laughs> don't, don't repeat. Don't repeat that. Say names. your spouse. I don't need that many wives. <laughs> Say your name and her name. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> to be. To, to be. be my husband. My constant friend. My faithful partner. And my love from this day forward. In the presence of God and our family and friends. I offer you my solemn vow to be your faithful partner in sickness and health, in good times and bad, and in joy as well as sorrow. I promise to love you unconditionally, to support you in your goals, to honor and respect you, to laugh with you and to cry with you. And to cherish you for as long as we both shall live. All right, so if you got the rings, you can take the ring and men, you can place it on your wife's finger. And if, if you can't get it off, just touch your <laughs> ring, that's fine. <clears throat> and just repeat this, repeat this, re men, repeat this after me. Call your wife's name. I give you this ring as a token of my love and as a symbol of the covenant that we now enter. Wives, put the thing, ring on their finger, your husband's finger. Say, I give you this ring as a token of my love and as a symbol of the covenant that we now enter. So congratulations, you guys are remarried. <laughs> so now you can, you can, <laughs> so now, so now you can, uh, you can kiss your bride. Amen. Yeah. 
and then you can go home. Amen. We're through. Amen. So, so we just want to say thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope this is, uh, 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 oh, and, and Stacy's got the certificates if you want to fill that out to, just to show you got your uh, vows renewed, and you can just write your name. But we want to say thank you for coming, thank you for being a part of this, and, uh, and I hope everybody enjoyed themselves, and we will see everybody on Sunday.